So let me finish up here with an ongoing series of tweets. This is a series called Electioneer. Electioneer. And it covers different aspects of electoral and identity politics and just politics in general. But I have a couple tweets under the Electioneer name, and this is one where we talk about hubris in electoral politics. It helps to have hubris if you're speaking or acting as if you want or need every vote. It hurts if you're speaking or acting as if you don't want or need every vote. And then I say here, harm via identity politics. We're talking about harm through identity politics. It will happen, there will be harm if some blocks are villains, and it won't happen if all blocks are heroic. So let me break this down for you. Electioneer, we'll start with hubris in electoral politics. It helps if you're speaking or acting as if you want or need every vote. And it hurts if you're acting like you don't want or need every vote. So if you're saying, you know, if you're, if you're running for president, for example, if you're running for governor, or you're running for senate, whatever it might be, if you act like, oh, I don't need your vote, I don't need every vote, I'm, I have hubris, I am on top of the world, I have the demographics I want, and I'm very happy. There is <laughs> diminishing returns when you're using your hubris and you're acting like you don't need help, you don't need people. Because then people might feel compelled to say, well, if you're, if you're going to cast me aside, if you don't need my vote, if you don't need my help, then maybe I don't need you either. You know, it's a two-way street, right? This is more about optics than any sort of substantive analysis. This is sort of about how people come off. So, it does hurt if you have hubris and you say, well, I don't, I don't need anything. I don't, I don't need you. I don't need you. Now, if you have hubris and you say, well, I, I do, I do need you. I need, we're, we can conquer the world. We our egos have been elevated. We can conquer it all. And uh, so it can, it can show that you have strength, that you, ha you, you believe in yourself. If you're a politician out there trying to get elected and you have hubris, but you're speaking for the people, the voice of the people, and you're talking in a positive way, a positive way, you bring people together, you create unity, you create a feeling of togetherness, of belonging, that's helpful. That's helpful to bringing us together. Say, for example, as Americans. Bring us together as Americans. When you act like you don't want or need every vote, I mean, who needs you? You know? And by the way, why would you undermine the chances of getting more votes? Don't you want to win? Right? Like, you want, you don't want to call 25% or 30% of all the electorate deplorable. Right? You want that there to be a chance for that 25 or 30 percent to vote for you. You don't want to cast them aside. You don't want to push them away. You want to bring them in. You want to have them see you as an option. That's what I say. I mean, I have never run for public office, but uh, this seems pretty obvious to me. And the ongoing technical difficulties continue. But our video is almost over today. I've had a good time. Let's go ahead and just finish up this tweet for you. And then we can all move on with our day. So, when we talk about dividing people up by group or by identity, whatever it might be, that's identity politics. And some people will say, well, all politics are identity politics. And I say, no, that's not true. Yes, identity figures into many of our decisions. There are certain, again, certain biases here, biases there, based on our identity, based on our immutable characteristics, based on our lifestyle choices. We have all these different things. We have our identity. So harm, harm will come of identity politics if some blocks are villains. If you say there are, and again, this is an easy framing, so I'll use it, deplorables. 
If you say that some people are unsavory, that they don't deserve to be looked at as human beings, that they're just villains, that they, they can't be changed, that this is immutable, they are bad hombres, that is not good because then it creates division, it creates a problem between two or more groups. In the, in, in the intersectional world, it might be a bunch of groups that all have their own hierarchy, their, might, their, their own oppressors and oppressed, and it just, it's just, you know, intersectional feminism is a big mess in my world, in my book. Um, because of all that, it breaks down when you start to have certain feminists fighting other feminists that are fighting other feminists for different reasons because they all see each other as simply framed as oppressor or oppressed. It just doesn't really work out. Some are villains and some are heroes in that world. And I say we're all heroes. Americans are heroes. We should stick together. We should try to unify and have a singular message, singular value system enshrined under the Constitution. So I don't think harm can happen if you call all blocks heroic. If you try to fight for the American vote, you don't go, well, vote for me because you're white. Vote for me because you're black, Asian, Hispanic, Pacific Islander, Native American. If you come from India or China or Russia or wherever it might be, in Europe or Africa, anywhere, separating people, like it makes sense to separate, you know, to look at Americans first, have a nationalistic bent over a globalistic bent, but when you, once you're here, once you're in America, once you're a citizen, once you're on your path to citizenship, hopefully not too long, not too much of a waiting period, if you're going through a legal immigration process, I think the people should come here, as President Trump says, legally. But once you're here and you're in the system and you have your, your ID, you have your citizenship, we shouldn't be pitting each other against each other. We shouldn't be going with the Southern strategy like Nixon and putting working class people against other people and so on and so forth. I don't believe that that's the heroic way to go. That's more villainous to me. But I advocate what I advocate for. If you have any thoughts or observations on any of this, please do leave me a comment below. And I look forward to interacting with you. So I do think there is much harm that can come from identity politics, and that's why I do not support it. If I were running for office, I would try to stay on the side of fighting for the people, being a populist, and fighting for all. So.